Hi, I'm John Mayfield, at, uh, owner of Mayfield Mastering here in Nashville. And uh, in this video, we're gonna get down to more of the scientific aspect of what happens to a file when it first gets here. First thing we're gonna do is look at what's called phase rotation or file symmetry. This is the first thing that every file goes through um, before we start. And this has to do with the digital, the internal digital value of the file. Now I'm not talking about RMS, I'm talking about the internal digital value. We can cut to the song that we're gonna be working on today. I have it pulled up in Rx. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the phase algorithm, and there it is. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull up the waveform statistics. Okay, so we can watch that as we check our file. Now, phase rotation has to do with the alignment of the plus and minus sine wave as oriented to the center line of zero. So if we wanna look at this file, this is the entire file of the song. I'm gonna pull up the phase algorithm again, and I'm gonna ask it to tell me whether it's in or out. All right, it just analyzed the entire phase. Rotation, not phase in the classic sense. It's uh, 38 degrees out in total. So what that's gonna do is if I choose to fix it, it's fixed. Now let's check it again. And it's down to minus two, which is where you want to be. So let's undo that and pull up a very specific section of the song. Let's go to the intro, which I happen to know is just basically acoustic guitar and vocal. And you can see right here, there's more above the center line, which is right here. There's more data above the center line than there is below it. Well, that's not good. That will create what is called a false digital value. So let's ask Rx to tell me, to analyze it and tell me how far it's out. Whoa, well, that's 34% out. All right, let's get a little bit more specific. Show me that section. Uh, it's still about 34, but there were other sections of it that were 50. So we're gonna fix, I'm, I'm going to render it, and I want you to watch this waveform right here. You see where it moved down. Let me undo that, see it again. Okay, that is adjusting the internal digital value. Let's look at a more specific example right there. That's a pretty bad section there. So let's just look at it independently. That's 50 degrees off. So let's look at the digital value again. And that is at minus 11. So let's fix it and see what happens. Doesn't change the full scale digital value much. Let's go back, undo it, redo it. On the right channel, it, it changed significantly. So this is out of symmetry. There's a lot more on the plus side of the waveform than there is the minus. So what that's gonna do is when we're playing the file through, the, a full scale digital value of that section is gonna be lower in level digitally than it would have been had I not changed it. Now that's gonna increase my headroom at that point, but it's not going to change the RMS value. The loudness of that section is going to be exactly the same as it would have been had I not changed it. But the internal digital value is going to be a dB less. 
That's going to give me a little more headroom on that section. And the funny thing about this is, is that um, when I, um, when folks ask me, well, what, what are you trying to accomplish here? Because of the level wars and the fact that we have to master as loud as we possibly can, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that our internal digital values of the files that come in are in line with the uh, RMS of it, or in line with what it should be digitally. Because once we change the digital value internally of these files, it's not going to change the RMS of it one iota, zero. Uh, but it gives us more headroom and allows us to master at a little bit louder level without running into false digital values, which will cause distortion when you wouldn't think it normally would. So this is one of the things that's really incumbent upon us to look at before we even start. I don't even list. I, I may have listened down to the files to uh, get a perspective on what the album's about, but the first thing we do scientifically is we go and analyze and uh, fix whatever rotation problems might exist. I'll give you a very good example. Many years ago, uh, when we found out about this issue, I was mastering a big band album, and uh, it came to the trombone solo, and I couldn't master it without it distorting. So I called the, en the engineer, and I said, Is, do you recall anything funny about that trombone solo? He said, you know, John, now that you mentioned it, when I looked at it, it looked out of whack. I said, what do you mean whack? He said, well, there was about twice the amount of value in the waveform above the center line as opposed to below. So it was much higher in the plus value than it was the minus value. And he said, I, I didn't think of it as being a problem, but now that you mention it, uh, that was weird. And I said, well, send me the consolidated file over that trombone solo and let me put it through this phase algorithm. And sure enough, when he sent it to me, I looked at it and said, oh my God, this was, it was way out of whack. And so I asked the software to fix it. It corrected it. I sent it back. He ran it through the exact same automation, exact same mix. And remember, the RMS value of the file did not change one iota. So the, the, the mix was intact. As a matter of fact, we nulled it just to check. And it was the exact same mix. And I ran it through the mastering process, didn't change anything, and it was perfect. No distortion whatsoever. So all that to say is that phase rotation is an important factor in mastering because of headroom. Uh, we need to create as much headroom as we possibly can nowadays, obviously, because we're having to be as loud. So, that's the first stage.